salvete discipuli. In this video, we will learn the persons of the verb. First person is I, second person is you, third person is he, she, or it, and how to say that in Latin. That is the new grammar of stage four. Okay, let's learn the new grammar of stage four. In stage four, we will add to our knowledge of Latin how to say I do something and you do something. Here are the new verb endings and the pronouns that go with them. Here's the good news. You've all likely learned a little Spanish, right? Well, Spanish came from Latin, and Spanish has preserved the Latin way of saying these things. So you probably know, yo hablo español means I speak Spanish. You probably know, hablas tu español? Do you speak Spanish? Well, guess what, people? You know, yo is the pronoun. Yo in Spanish is I. Tu is a pronoun. Tu in Spanish means you. But you maybe already know the O of hablo, okay? The O of hablo also means I. In fact, you don't need yo at all, okay? You can just say hablo español, and it means I speak Spanish. Okay, so maybe you already know. Look at this S. This S in Spanish is how you say you do something. You can just say, hablas español, and it means, do you speak Spanish? You don't actually need the word to at all. The S all on its own means you. Guess what, people? Take a look at something fantastic. It's exactly the same thing in Latin. Spanish has perfectly preserved Latin here. So if you already know yo hablo español and hablas tu español, you already know how to say this in Latin. Ego dico latine. Now, one difference is in Latin, for some reason, they use an adverb here. Latine is an adverb, which means like Latinly. Okay, this would be like, do you speak Englishly? Okay, instead of saying, do you speak English? That's just how Latin works. But the most important thing here is ego. The word ego is the Latin pronoun for I. Now, we've borrowed this into English as the word ego, okay? When you say someone has a big ego, it's like they think only about themselves. In other words, like, I am the most important thing. You know, we have egotistic as an, ad, as, as an adjective about that, okay? So, ego means I, but look at this, look at this. Dico. The O of dico is I speak. You wouldn't need ego at all. You could just say, dico latine, I speak Latin. Now take a look. Dicus tu latine, do you speak Latin? Tu, which is exactly the same in Spanish, tu is the pronoun for you. But take a look. Look at this S, okay? This is the same S of hablas, okay? Dicis, do you speak Latin? You don't actually need the two at all, okay? You could just say, Dicis Latine, and it would mean, do you speak Latin? Okay, so again, the pronouns are optional. Now, throughout most of book one of the Cambridge series, the pronouns are going to be there every time we have ego and tu. Think of them as kind of like training wheels on your Latin bicycle. You know, they remind you ego means I, tu means you, but don't get too used to them because the day is going to come when all of a sudden the pronouns ego and tu are going to vanish. So you need to remember the O of dico means I. The S of dicus means you. Okay, so we call this the persons of the verb. 
First person is I, okay? So think of it as like when you're speaking from your own perspective and you say, I do something, I am first person. Second person is you. You're speaking to somebody else. You, I am first person. That other person I'm speaking to, you are second person. Third person is he, she, or it. So again, like you and I could be speaking and we point over in the corner and, and our friend is there and, and she's third person, okay? So again, first person I, second person you, third person he, she, or it. So from now on in class, if I say like second person of the verb, you know I'm talking about the you form, things like that. Okay, so let's look at just a few more examples to lock in our knowledge of this. Ego means I. Ego pecuniam habeo. I have money. Tu means you. Tu pecuniam habes. You have money. Again, ego means I. But the O of habeo, that also means I have. To means you, okay? The pronoun to means you, but the S of habes, the S of habes means you have money. Okay, it's your turn. Take a moment. What does ego mean? What does to mean? And how would you translate ego culinam intro and tu culinam intras if Kulina means kitchen, and intrat means he enters. Intrat means he enters. But what does intro, what does intras mean? Okay, do you have your translations ready? Here's the answer. Ego means I. Ego kulinam intro means I enter the kitchen. Tu means you. Tu kulinam intras means you enter the kitchen. Okay, look what I've done. I've just mixed it up a little bit. Think for a moment. Take a look. If, and you, you know this stuff, in horto means in the garden. You know that laborat means he, she, or it works. And so, take a moment. What's your translation? Tu means you. Tu in horto laboras means you work in the garden. Ego means I. Ego in horto laboro means I work in the garden. Okay, now take a look at something amazing. The Latin word ego in the five major Romance languages has done very poorly, okay? I mean, look, look at, ego turns into yo in Spanish, je in French, io in Italian, yo in Romanian, eu in Portuguese, okay? So, ego has done very poorly. But take a look at something very amazing. Two has remained the exact same word in all the Romance languages. It is, in fact, the only Latin word that is exactly the same as its Latin original in all of the Romance languages.